this cyclone is a, going to be one such type of a super cyclone of such because it's going to be generating or degenerating into very very severe it's called as funny but pronounced generally as funny and it's going to affect uh, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, West Bengal and its effect felt over North East India too and it is imperative uh, that uh, anyone who goes on to have uh, any amount of knowledge or wants to have any amount of knowledge eh, for eh, such type of cyclones which will come, come this year, which will also come next year, which will also go on to hit it eh, year after year, year after year. It is essential that anyone must be conversant with eh, the phenomena of why is it that the cyclones take place, eh, what are the factors that go on to affect it, eh, what are the reasons behind it, eh, what how is uh, the mechanism for the development of such type of cyclones? Uh? Tropical cyclones, uh, in fact, uh, includes uh, uh, all cyclonic circulations originating over tropical waters. Tropical cyclones are intense low pressure areas, usually some 160 to 800 kilometers in diameter, in which uh, violent winds with maximum wind speeds in excess of 6 to 3 knots uh, blow towards the center. That is, the wind speed is very, very high. The flow of air is anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. In uh, India or over the Bay of Bengal region, eh, which go to sometimes cross India, sometimes they go on to take the form of a tropical cyclone and graduate into, they go on to take the form of a tropical storm and then graduate into tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones are a warm, cold, vortex circulation. That means, eh, that is the core of it is warm. That's the way that the winds go on to move. It's a vortex circulation of tropical origin, that means uh, originating in tropical regions, uh, with a small diameter, that is some hundreds of kilometers of south, uh, often of an approximately circular shape, uh, that is, uh, uh, that is this type of a shape, completely circular, like that of a spiral galaxy. So often of a circular shape eh, with a minimum surface pressure that is less than 900 millibars, eh, that is the surface pressure, that is eh, the sustained wind speed of 33 meter per second eh, and torrential rains and sometimes accompanied by thunderstorm. So it does go on to be having such type of a rain like eh, as we can go on to think of describing it, it go on to look like someone go on, uh, someone has opened a horse pipe from the sky. These tropical cyclones are given different names in different places. Various conditions need to be fulfilled for tropical cyclones to develop. One of these conditions is going to be the first is suitable source of sensible and latent heat. Tropical cyclones form only over warm waters that have temperature of at least 26 degrees centigrade and preferably over 26 7 degrees centigrade. This ensures sufficient evaporation and a source of moisture. The moisture thus provides the necessary latent heat. The warm water conditions must be extending from the top to a depth of 60 to 70 meters. If such conditions are not present, then deep convection within water will bring cooler water at the surface by the churning and mixing of the disturbed water beneath the tropical cyclone. This will cut off the heat supply, leading to dissipation of the cyclone. The third is the high humidity level. Humidity level in the mid troposphere must be high as the entrainment of moisture, that is entrapment, almost entra entrapment, eh? entrainment of moisture will lead to cumulonimbus cloud. If dry air is entrained, it will inhibit cumulonimbus cloud formation. Cumulonimbus convection will not occur even in oceanic area when the relative humidity of mid tropospheric air is uh, less than 50 to 60 percent. The Coriolis parameter must exceed a certain critical value. The Coriolis force has a value of zero at the equator but increases rapidly with the sign of the latitude. So, it's zero at the equator, it's 90 degrees on the top. It is only when uh, the Coriolis force exceeds uh, 10 to with the power 5 per second in magnitude, which does not occur until 5 degree latitude that the Coriolis force is strong enough to lead to the development of cyclonic vortex. The maximum cyclonic development takes place around 15 degree latitude. Between 10 to 20 degree latitude, 65% of the world tropical cyclones develop. 
It might be expected that since the Coralis force goes on increasing with latitudes, the tropical cyclones will be intensified. However, as the ocean surface gradually becomes cooler, the supply of sensible heat and moisture decreases. Consequently, less energy will be available for release in the upper troposphere. Unless this condition occurs, the cyclone cannot be sustained at all. There must be well-developed divergence in the upper troposphere because the pressure will fall at the surface only when the outflow from the system aloft exceeds the surface inflow. That is, outflow exceeds the surface inflow. That is, the winds that are going to be moving at the surface, uh, they are not going to be so much as the amount of outflow that goes in to take place. Uh. The inflow of moist air towards the low pressure center would soon fill up the system unless there is a chimney. It is a, this chimney mechanism that is responsible for it. You can understand this chimney mechanism by thinking that uh, if you have a very strong uh, exhaust fan in your house uh, and you're going to put it on, you require to open one door for the purpose of this, for the purpose that this exhaust fan will go on to work and function. Thank <laughs> you.